Hello and welcome back to Sheaf Math. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning to write equations from word problems. But these equations are going to be slope-intercept type. That way that you'll get used to seeing these type of equations. So just a little review of slope-intercept equation. It's uh, y equals mx plus b. And I'm sure that you have, uh, have done work with the uh, generic form of the slope-intercept. And so uh, in this equation, we have m, which stands for the rate of change or the slope. Um, it's how much it's going up or how much it's going down. And then we have the initial value or the y-intercept. And so this is the uh, initial cost or initial term that you have at the very beginning. Now, what does the rate of change look like in real life? Okay, because we do a lot of math on graphs and everything, but it really has nothing to do with real life. And so, what does that M look like? Well, here's some examples. How much someone makes per hour. This is a rate of change. For every hour you work, let's say you make $12 per hour, you'd keep adding 12 each hour, after each hour, and that's how much you would make. Okay, that's a rate. How much a plant costs each. If you bought one plant, or two plants, or three plants, or four plants, you would keep adding the cost of each plant each time you decided to buy another one. A monthly fee for joining a gym. So this would be, uh, like, let's say you had to pay $50 a month at your gym. You know, that would be 50 and then 50. It would keep going up by 50 how much you would pay in total. And then miles per hour in a car. And so this is how many miles you actually go in one hour. So let's say you went 60 miles per hour. You would go 60 and then you'd add another 60 and add another 60 for your total miles. Okay, what about the initial value? What does that look like, the B, the y-intercept? Now, this is the initial term or initial cost. And so here are a few examples. How much money you started with in a bank account. If you opened up a bank account and put in a certain amount of money, that would be your, your initial value. And then you might add to it each time. You might take away from it. But that initial uh, value is what will, it will never change. It's constant. And then the upfront registration fee at a gym. I don't know why we have so many gym problems, but um, the upfront fee is like, let's say you were going to go join a gym and they charged you a sign-up fee of $25. Um, and then each month after that, you had to pay $50. Well, the $25 you have to pay no matter what. It's a one-time cost, and that would be your initial uh, cost for this one. Or how much a car costs before it depreciates or before it loses its value. So when you buy a new car, you buy it, let's say, for $20,000, and then each year it goes down. All right. Now we're going to look at some real-life word problems. But before we get into this one, I want to talk to you about how to approach a word problem. Because so many students hate word problems, and the reason why is they, they think that if they don't understand it after reading it one time, that they're, they're not good in this. But I'm telling you that I have to read word problems over and over, and your teacher has to read them over and over again. And mathematicians who are brilliant have to read them over and over to understand them. It's not, it's rarely possible to read it one time and know exactly what's going on. So here we go. Tom opened up a savings account with $150. Each month he put $20 into the account as savings. How much would Tom have after 18 months? So first we have to make sure that we understand what this means, right? So let's go back. Do you know what a savings account is? That's when you put money into a bank. And so 150 is how much he starts with. He, he opens it up and puts 150 in there. Then he starts to save money. Each month he puts $20 into that savings account. Um, and then he wants to know how much he'll have after, uh, or somebody wants to know how much Tom would have after 18 months. So what we're going to do first is we're going to find our rate of change. What number is uh, causing this value to go up at a constant rate or go down at a constant rate. Um, and so that would be 
the savings that he's putting in each month, that 20, right? Every month he puts in 20, so it's going up in value 20 each month, straight line. And so after we, we get our rate of change of 20, we then have to find our initial value. And so that's pretty easy to see. That's the money that he puts into that savings account at the beginning. No matter how much he adds to it or subtracts to it, he will always have put that money in at the beginning, right? That, would, that was his starting point, 150. So that's our initial value. And so we simply have to put these values into our slope-intercept form. So the M is 20 and the B is 150. So there it is. And so if we look at it, um, the 20, we're going to be multiplying that by, well, how many months that he's going to be saving. And then what we're going to add to that is how much he started with, his initial value. Now, in this particular problem, it asks about um, Tom after 18 months, how much money he had after 18 months. Now, this lesson is not about solving them. It's about writing the equation. But if you wanted to, what we would do is, we would multiply $20 times 18 months. And then, after we figure that out, we would add how much he started with, which was 150. And that's how much you would get. And I'm going to let you figure that one out on your own. Later. Okay, our next one. Javier wanted to get a fish tank for his house. He went to the store and saw that the tank setup would cost 75 bucks. The fish were priced at $3 a piece. How much would he have to pay if he wanted 12 fish with the tank? Well, which number here is causing the price or value to either go up or down? Well, we know he has to buy the tank, right? He has to buy the tank because he's getting this uh, fish tank full of fish, hopefully. But which, which number is causing it to the price to rise? Well, it depends on how many fish fish he buys and so three dollars a piece anytime you see three dollars a piece or three dollars per whatever that is going to be your rate of change okay and leaving us our initial value or our initial cost or upfront fee that's 75 dollars he's going to have to buy that uh that tank setup no matter if he has one fish or a million fish okay so how would we set this up? Well, we simply put it into the slope intercept form. Three in for M, 75 in for B. And so let's look at this. To find out how much he would have to pay, you would multiply three times how many fish he was gonna get, X, and then you would add the tank at the end, right? And so in this particular problem, it wants to know how much it would cost with 12 fish. And so we put 12 in for X, Multiply $3 times 12 fish, 36. We add 75 and we get 111, I think. You'll have to double check that later. And so that's how we set it up for this one. Okay, here's a new one. Kimmy bought a new car for $12,000. Each year the car's value decreases by 500. How much will the car be worth after seven years? Now, I kind of talked a little bit about cars decreasing in value but um, I'm not sure if you know this but when you buy a new car um, it immediately starts to lose its value every time you drive more miles on it it loses value yeah there are some exceptions of like classic cars that go up in value but um, most of the cars go down in value and so um, how much will the car be worth after seven years if it's going if it's decreasing by 500 well what would the rate of change be? This is the number that's making the value either go up or down at a constant rate. Okay, well, we know the value is 12,000. So what is the rate of change? It's going down 500. How do we write going down by 500 or decreasing by 500? That would be minus 500. And so then what would our initial value be? Right, The initial value of a car is $12,000. So we would put 12,000 there. And so we're going to set up our equation, put negative 500 in for M and 12,000 in for B, our initial value. And so how you would figure out 
after a certain amount of years is, well, you put in the number of years in for x, multiply it by minus 500, and then you um, combine it with 12,000, and it'll be a negative number, um, adding to the 12,000, giving you something less. So for this particular one, we would put 7 in for the x, the number of years. So negative 500 times 7 years would be negative 3,500. And so negative 3,500 plus 12,000 is going to bring down the value 3,500 bucks, which comes to, I think, 8,500. So the, these cars start losing value. Just a quick note, never buy a new car, always buy a used car about two or three years old. Okay, that was my uh, just little tip for you. Okay, there we have it. You just learned how to write equations from word problems in the slope-intercept form. I hope this helped. Um, uh, I always w encourage my students, and I want to encourage you to, to always read a question more than one time. Um, like I said, your teacher, myself, we, we have to read them over and over again to understand them as well. Okay, it's just it's nearly impossible to do it from one read. All right. Well, thank you for watching it and we'll see you next time.